Napoleon referred to England as a nation of shopkeepers. And he meant this as an insult, but personally, I take it as a huge compliment. And today, I want to explain to you why I think the physical store is far from dead, but is instead a thriving environment that delivers both financially and socially. Now, I first got involved in retail 23 years ago when I started working for a design agency. And I got to see how the design, manufacture, and advertising of products all comes to a head in a store. Now, this is where the customer chooses to put their hand in their pocket and buy. And I was hooked. This is the sharp end of business, and I've been fascinated by retail ever since. Now, I've been fortunate to travel the world to visit and experience amazing stores on four continents, and the humble shop continues to surprise and delight. Now, COVID hit stores hard with global lockdowns and store closures, and this led to lots of negative media coverage, with headlines suggesting that the store was dead. And this resulted in some big decisions made, um, big decisions made by uh, business leaders, and they were misinformed. And we saw, for example, how a, a digital and social media business recruited 10,000 new staff firmly in the belief that we would all be online in the future. Unfortunately, we didn't all go online, and this company ended up making the vast majority of these new hires redundant, which is a devastating miscalculation that ignored a basic understanding of human behavior. Now, we learned the difference between habits, what we instinctively do, and behavior, which is the resulting actions. And despite what many people said, our habits didn't change during lockdown. We just put them on hold. Soft, strong, and very, very long. Remember trying to buy one of these nearly four years ago. Now, we've learned to appreciate human-to-human -human contact because humans are social creatures. We kept hearing about new normal, how we're all online now. But this was a myth. Instead, what we did was return to normal normal. And as we emerged bleary-eyed from lockdown, we saw a number of things evolve. Firstly, footfall, the number of people on the high street was returning back to pre-COVID levels. It's currently 13% lower than 2019. But we have to factor in a couple of important reasons here. Working from home, means that up to 20% of office workers may be in their houses on any given day. And this reduces the population in town centres. We also have to consider the impact of foreign tourists. For obvious reasons, there are no Russians <coughs> travelling and spending at the moment. And Chinese tourists have only been able to start travelling again in recent months. And this is a huge part of retail sales, particularly in major cities like London. And secondly is digital sales, which is the purchase of goods online. Now, we have seen this growing steadily for years. It hasn't reached its full potential yet, and its share of retail sales is still increasing. Now, during the COVID, we saw an obvious spike in retail sales because the government closed all of the stores. But however, since the pandemic, the digital share of retail sales has dropped back to where it would have been if COVID had never happened at all. Now, the Chinese coined a fabulous phrase due to COVID, revenge shoppers. Isn't that a great description? <laughs> now, that's a wonderful way of depicting the overreaction of people once we came out of lockdown and did all the things that we have been denied. And this behavior was acted out around the world. So we went shopping, we booked a meal in a restaurant, we had a haircut, well, maybe you did, and we went on holiday, all because we could again. So where have we returned to? Back to the behaviours and the shopping decisions that we made pre-COVID. And this is natural and instinctive because humans are social creatures. Now, 75% of global retail sales 
still happen in a store using one of these. And that is three quarters of all purchases in the world. Now that is a huge market share for a channel that the lazy media suggests is dying. Adds brightness to your clothes. Well, judging by this shirt, I'd say it's a resounding success. So we can see how, we can see how the whole process of ev evolution has come forward with shoppers. Um, and, and following on from those Chinese guys, we, we're seeing that what's happening is that there are a number of new distinct things coming forward. And the symbiosis that I, refer I made reference to um, is capturing the attention of people and allowing us to shop differently. Now I want to talk to you about what I call symbiotic retail. <laughs> Others may refer to this as unified commerce, or that horrible word, fidgetal. And lots of brands and retailers focus heavily on recognizing and differentiating the various ways in which we can shop. But when I talk about symbiotic retail, it recognizes that shoppers are not choosing one way of buying over another. So, where are we? The symbiosis means we're looking at a principle of as well as, not instead of. And too much emphasis is often placed on one way of buying over another, when in reality, as shoppers, we all use lots of them. So what I'd like to do now is offer you three differing examples of what I mean by symbiotic retail. Number one, Nike's app can recognize you when you arrive at a shopping mall. And it can then notify you and encourage you to come and visit the store. And inside the store, you can scan, learn about, and buy products using the app in the store. And if you want to, make a, if you want to try on some products, you can request this via the app. And Nike already knows your sizes from previous purchases. So the correct items are waiting for you at the changing room. Secondly, that retailers like Situ Live and Showfield created physical showrooms to showcase products. But if you wanted to buy one of the products, you would digitally scan a QR code in the store, which takes you to the website where you buy for home delivery. So in effect, the whole store is a shop window for website sales. And the final example is the beauty retailer Sephora, who've just opened their first two stores in London recently. And they have stated that when they open a store in a new city, website traffic from that city increases. So if you visit the store, you explore the brand further online. So we can see how the store can be used in partnership with other channels, making the whole experience easier and more rewarding for the shoppers. And this is working. We've seen in the US, in 2023, a net gain of 900 new stores opening as brands recognize the value of a physical touch point in the center of their retail sales. If Carlsberg did TED Talks, <laughs> they wouldn't forget their bloody lines, that's for sure. <laughs> now, here in, the, here in the UK, Marks and Spencers has received some negative publicity because they closed a number of stores recently. And the general media is too fast to write negative stories about any retailer that closes a shop, implying that stores no longer work. But what doesn't get mentioned in those articles is that Mark Spencer was opening larger stores while closing smaller ones. So this wasn't a store closure program, it was a redefining of their retail estate and it's working for them. In the last year, their clothing and home sales increased by 11%, and more telling, their physical store sales increased by 14%. And I, recently, I was invited to visit their new store in Liverpool the day before it opened, and I got to witness the huge development in store design, uh, product, pl product presentation, and overall shopping experience. And it's easy to see why Marks & Spencer sales are increasing. And why is this working for Marks & Sparks?
because they recognize the value of good quality physical stores. Okay. Now, beans means, well, farts as far as I was concerned as a kid. Now, what I'd like to do now is talk a little bit about artificial intelligence and how this amazing technology needs to be balanced with the unique aspects of the physical store to ensure that the, that the stores are operating effectively. So, artificial intelligence, the latest buzzword in many industries, and the retail world is particularly interested in embracing this technology that has the ability to learn and evolve. So, artificial intelligence, or AI, can scour the internet to find reference points that shape its response, and it improves the more we use it. Now, for example, McDonald's is using AI to check the weather, traffic delays, roadworks, local events, and a range of other factors to help them calculate how many Big Macs they start cooking at the start of the day. So this predictive, accurate technology can save them millions of pounds in wasted food. Another example of AI in retail is how it's been used to monitor the body language of shoppers in store. Predictive AI can recognize unusual shopper behavior at self-checkout tills, and it can then notify staff who can then approach the customer and interact or confront them to prevent theft. Now, in fact, Waitrose has coined a fabulous phrase, love bombing. And this is where their staff will approach a suspicious uh, customer and then smother them with offers of help and attention to prevent them from stealing from the, from the store. <laughs> yeah, I love bombing. We need a bit more of that in the world, don't you think? So this reminds me a little bit of the Tom Cruise movie, Minority Report, where murders are predicted and, and stopped. But here we have AI predicting and preventing the theft of eggs and milk. Okay, it's not murder, but it's still important. So what I would like to do now is, is start looking at the three unique aspects of a store that differentiate it from the digital channels. And the first one is the ability to touch and feel products. For example, we can try on a pair of jeans to ensure that they fit properly. We can pick our own fresh fruit and vegetables to ensure we have the juiciest options. And we can sit on a sofa to feel how comfortable it will be in our own home. The second unique aspect is peripheral vision, the, the ability to be distracted by other products while shopping. On a website, we can open a page and look at a product. And apart from one or two other images at the bottom of the page, that's it. But if we go into a store to check out a product, say a new pair of jeans, we may notice a great pair of trousers or a stylish jumper and then end up buying them as well. So like magpies, we, we respond to shiny new things. And the physical store is the best way for a retailer to sell us more stuff. Now, just after Christmas, my wife and I went looking to buy a new fridge freezer. And instead, we came home with a pair of boots, <laughs> a handbag, some fishing tackle, and a load of naughty food. And only one of them was for me, and it wasn't the handbag. And I'm sure you've all done similar things yourselves before. Now, IKEA is brilliant at this. Their stores are full of complete room sets that can inspire us. And I know I've gone to IKEA to look at rugs, and I've ended up coming home with a, 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 a three plants, a flat pack wardrobe, and a coffee table. Oh, and a very cheap hot dog. And it's simply not possible to have the same experience on their website. The power and impact of great people helping a shop resonates strongly because humans are social creatures. I've just had an email come through. <laughs> <laughs> Liam, it's not important. <laughs> so we need to balance technology like AI with the unique human aspects of a physical store to ensure that we are effective and efficient 
but also that the whole experience is delightful and rewarding. So, as we move forward, I think we need to understand that the store is a wonderful place. And it's one of those places that can delight and surprise us as we move forward. So that's my view on stores, and that's why I will continue to use one of these for much of my shopping. So a nation of shopkeepers, maybe, but certainly a nation of shoppers, and shoppers that will continue to enjoy using stores. Thank you.